there are dark and ominous clouds that have, been, that have been hung on our horizon by people drunk with their own power and blinded by their own arrogance. We did not put them there. And even though we did not put them there, we have a duty to resist them. Now, before I make the statements I'm going to make, I'm going to say something that should be clear to everyone here. My bona fides over 25 years in this movement for a commitment to nonviolence are beyond reproach. I have never been accused of, of an act of violence. I have never been uh, convicted of an act of violence. It, one media outlet had to cut a check to me because they accused me of something that was simply not true and they settled quickly out of court that involved violence. So what I'm about to say comes from 25 years of commitment to nonviolence in this movement. Now, by saying what I'm about to say, I issue this as a warning to Pelosi, to Harry Reid, to the Obama administration. Do not push people to the breaking point. Don't do it. If you look at the 1960s and the turbulence and the convulsions and even some of the riots and the violence, if you look at the 1760s and you look at the 1770s, the further you get away from those times of drama, the more historians hold the governments accountable for what happened rather than those who participated in acts of convulsion. The Stamp Act, the Boston Tea Party, the Boston Massacre, these acts of tyranny by the British government are what precipitated the crisis in the American body politic because people said, we can't take it anymore. I will say it clearly, I will say it without apology, do not expect us to betray God and to pay for the murder of our neighbor. If you do, you are deceived, you are deluded, we will not comply. And there will be unthinkable, horrifying ramifications. People will react, whether they react peacefully yet forcefully and with forethought, or whether they react viscerally with eruptions of rage. You cannot expect over half of this population that believes that abortion is murder to turn around after we've been living our whole lives fighting to make child killing illegal. You cannot expect us to suddenly go quietly into the night and to pay for the murder of our neighbor. People will resist and they will revolt one way or another. Now, <clears throat> How would that resistance come about? What would it look like? Number one, people simply refusing to pay their taxes and suffering the consequences for it. Number two, people not paying their taxes but filing in a less than honest and forthright way, saying, hey, I'm not required to incriminate myself. Number three, peaceful demonstrations and peaceful civil disobedience. Number four, random acts of violence against things, against facilities things happening in the street, acts of vandalism. And then number five, God forbid, God forbid, reprisals against the individuals who are deemed guilty by some person, perhaps on the fringe, individuals deemed guilty of pushing this tyranny. If you slam the center with a sledgehammer of tyranny, you are going to have an eruption on the fringes. Now, if Pelosi and Reid and the people in the Obama administration, the talking heads on television, the people on radio, you friends in the internet world and in the media world, if you think that we are going to sit by and let this happen and go quietly into the night, you are wrong. If you think that you can browbeat us into silence, you are wrong. If you think that you can get us to quietly go along with it because you accuse us of stirring up domestic terrorism, again, you are wrong. We will resist you with the truth. We will not flinch. Abortion is murder. And if you think that we are going to sit by and let this country be overrun, not just by people who want people to be able to kill their offspring, but they want to force the rest of, it, of us to pay for it, you are wrong. History will vindicate us, and it will condemn 
this administration, the leaders of Congress, and those in this world who have promoted this Holocaust. And finally, I'll say this, and then I'm going to introduce or let these people introduce themselves. Democracy is not the end game here, people. Democracy is not the end game. Justice is. A majority of this country cannot vote to make us their slaves in an act of tyranny and evil. Period. Remember, it was a very charismatic Austrian-born German who promised hope that was elected democratically and brought the biggest nightmares of the 20th century. Democracy is not the end game. Justice is. I'm going to ask my friends to come. I'm the president and founder of Wake Up, Women Against the Killing and Exploitation of Unprotected Persons. We will not pay for the exploitation of women and the murder of unprotected persons. I am a leader and organizer from the state of Indiana of the Tea Party Movement. And I can fully speak with their grace that we are in full opposition to the health care plan um, with 48% of the conservative base. Uh, and we're leading that movement. Uh, I can honestly say that we are fully prepared to respond to this bill in the form of not paying taxes. And I myself can say that um, if you want me to pay for abortion with my tax dollars, you can pry it from my dead, cold hands. The chairman of Lifeguard, a group of sidewalk counselors in the D.C. area, and I will not cooperate with the most pro-death militant president ever in his death care plan. We will not co cooperate with this evil action of killing babies and also battering women. Women will incur more medical care with more abortions. I, um, I'm a Catholic, I'm a geometry teacher and an engineer, and I can say that I will go to jail before I will pay taxes that fund the killing of children. Dick Retta, that's R-E-T-T-A. I spent 10 years in front of uh, uh, child killing centers, just like, such as Planned Parenthood, uh, or, or offering women alternatives to abortion, and I will not tolerate the the being forced to pay for the murder of my neighbor's children, I would refuse to, refuse to pay my taxes.